Today we're speaking with Dr. Katherine Taylor, Associate Professor in the Cancer Control Program at Lombardi Comprehensive Cancer Center at Georgetown University Medical Center. Her talk was Decision Making in Prostate Cancer Screening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. What is the latest on research about whether early prostate cancer diagnosis and treatment results in any redu reduced disease-related mortality? Well, uh, a year ago, in March of 2009, there were two very large uh, randomized controlled trials um, that were published. Um, one was conducted in Europe, and that was the European Prostate Cancer uh, Screening Trial. And one was here in the U.S., the Prostate, Lung, Colorectal, and Ovarian Cancer Screening Trial. And these trials had each been going on for almost 20 years. Um, the um, European trial had uh, several hundred thousand men the um, U.S. trial had 75,000 men, and so needless to say, everyone was, was thrilled when, when they were getting ready to publish the results. Unfortunately, they're not the same results, um, and so the controversy continues. Um, the European trial found a 20 percent mortality reduction among men who had been undergoing annual prostate cancer screening compared to the PLCO, the U.S. trial, which did not find a mortality benefit from undergoing annual screening. Um, there are many methodologic differences between these two trials, which probably explain some of that. Um, men in the U.S. Uh, are generally much more highly screened at baseline coming into the trial than men in Europe. There's a much lower rate of screening in Europe. Um, that probably contributes. Um, in any case, um, these were both preliminary results, and so they each have longer-term follow-up that they're working on, um, but unfortunately that still won't be available for several years. So the short answer is there's still a controversy, and um, it's really still not settled yet whether or not screening results in reduced mortality due to prostate cancer. Would you describe the problem of overdiagnosis resulting from screening when the disease would not otherwise increase a man's chance for morbidity and mortality? Sure. I, I think one of the best examples of overdiagnosis comes from autopsy studies. These are studies in which men have died of causes other than prostate cancer. They've never been diagnosed with prostate cancer. And then their prostates are removed and looked at for evidence of prostate cancer. And interestingly, um, 50 percent of men between the ages of 40 and 49 have evidence of prostate cancer in their bodies, never diagnosed, and it goes up from there. Sixty percent of men who are 60 and older and 70 percent of men who are 70 and older, just uh, about that regular, have evidence of prostate cancer never diagnosed. And so what that means is, is that they went on to die of their heart disease or, or whatever it is they may have died of never knowing that they had prostate cancer. Now, had they been screened for prostate cancer, it undoubtedly would have been found and then in all likelihood treated. But in these cases, and in many like them, never would have helped them because they already had other conditions that were more likely to kill them than prostate cancer. And so that's what overdiagnosis means. It means that you're getting diagnosed when it's not going to extend your life. And part of the problem in prostate cancer is because it's often, although not always, often a very slow-growing disease. And so many other things are happening um, at the same time, and so it may or may not help you to find and to treat prostate cancer. What are the challenges when it comes to educating men about the benefits and limitations of screening? There are many. Um, uh, let's see. First of all, is um, to, for, for men to understand this concept of overdiagnosis that I was just describing um, is very difficult because in, in this country in particular, finding cancer early has been something that has been around for a long time and the thought that you shouldn't necessarily find cancer early is is absolutely perplexing it's very counterintuitive and so um, for men to take the time to stop and think about why that might be the case is is hard to do and men want to protect themselves obviously you know although prostate cancer is, is a slow growing disease usually it also kills 30,000 men in this country every year so it's very serious and so men want to be able to do something and so the only thing that we have for them to really do at this point is screening. There's not really um, any sort of major prevention effort that men can avail themselves of. Um, family history of course is a problem. Men who are uh, African American descent are at higher risk and so men really want to try to do something about this and screening is what we have. And so to then tell men well you know what wait a minute stop and think there's a bigger picture here. 
That's that's a very difficult message to try to get across and for, for men to hear. Um, so it's been termed the enthusiasm for cancer screening in the U.S. makes it hard for men to um, hear the opposite side of that story. What are some of the key factors men should keep in mind when they're deciding whether or not to be screened for prostate cancer? I think the main thing is because there is not a right or wrong answer, because we do not know whether or not prostate cancer screening saves lives, the most important thing to think about is what will make you as a man most comfortable with your decision. Are you someone who really wants to know everything possible and even if you do find that you have prostate cancer you're ready and willing to make those subsequent decisions that will then need to be made regarding types of treatment versus active surveillance, um, etc. Or are you somebody who, well, might want to wait until all of the data are in and you're happy with the fact that, well, you might have evidence of prostate cancer, but since you know that it may or may not help you, you will decide to wait. And so it's really an individual decision, and that, of course, is what makes it so difficult um, for patients and physicians alike is because they have to make an individual decision every time this topic comes up. And so... Um, I, I think it's really what men are most comfortable with that is the most important thing to consider. Dr. Taylor, thank you so much. Thank you.